Other test subjects besides 11, like 1 through 10, most of them are dead, but others were like banished to the upside down, like they couldn't get out. It had an effect on them because they were in it for so long that they transformed into what was the monster. So the monster was a recent test subject. <gasps> Rejected 15 times. Matt and Ross Duffer, better known as the Duffer Brothers, are one of the biggest reasons behind the success of Stranger Things. Not only is the show one of the most popular series at the time, it's even so popular it broke Netflix for a bit when season 4's second half was released. However, the road to this success was a rocky one, and the two brothers revealed that they were rejected by close to 15 to 20 networks when they had started to pitch the show at first. Some networks did show interest, but they were still ultimately unwilling to let people that were so new to the industry create such a show. Eventually, Netflix was the only one that gave the green light, and as everyone can see, it was one of the best decisions that the streaming giant ever made. Millie almost quit. Millie Bobby Brown almost quit acting right before she landed the role of Stranger Things, which would have been a big tragedy for the show because most of us cannot imagine anyone else playing the role of Eleven. The reason behind her almost quitting is because she received a lot of rejections over time and was unable to land a good role. She acted in a few commercials and really wanted the role of Lady Lyanna in Game of Thrones. She gave the audition for the Game of Thrones role and was unfortunately rejected. This made her think that the industry is too difficult and perhaps that she should quit. But fortunately, she landed the role of Eleven on Stranger Things and has been on an upward trajectory in terms of her career ever since, starring in many other projects such as the movie Enola Holmes. Historically inaccurate Stranger Things is a show that takes place in the 80s and the entire crew of that show tries their best to commit to that period. Whether it's the way the characters talk, act, or what we see in the environment, everything for the most part is accurately made and does not show anything that did not exist in that time. However, this is not applicable to everything because everyone makes mistakes. A subreddit hilariously pointed out that sometime in the first season of the show, there are some air conditioning units that originated in the 1990s and were around until the early 2000s, which is a decade ahead of the time period that Stranger Things takes place in. Sweethearts on and off camera. Nancy and Jonathan are one of the most beloved couples in TV, at least when they're not going through their relationship problems, but something not everyone knows is that they are just as much as sweethearts behind the scenes as well. After meeting on the set of Stranger Things, the actors who portray the two characters started dating in real life and have been together ever since. Although some speculated that they might not be together for some time because of the fact that they stopped posting as many pictures together on Instagram. There are behind the scenes pictures of them flirting off camera from the production of Stranger Things season four, so there seems to be no trouble in paradise. Ups and downs. The Duffer brothers have always praised Millie Bobby Brown as an actress and have called her gifted at portraying the roles that she has to. And they have even particularly praised her as an actress in ways that someone her age usually fails to follow because it takes a lot of attention and dedication to commit to a character. But things were not always ideal, as the brothers admit that there were times when they were reminded that she is indeed still a child. One example that they spoke of was that one day Millie came to the set covered head to toe in glitter, and she said she was unaware of how she even got it on her. The Duffers hilariously compared the situation to that of an adult actor, like David Harbour, saying that I don't have to worry about him coming on the set covered in glitter. It took 45 minutes to get all of the glitter off, which of course delayed shooting. Home Delivery Finn Wolfhard, who portrays Mike Wheeler, gave his audition like any other actor on the show, but there is something different about his audition compared to everyone else and that is the fact that he recorded his audition tape from his bed because he was sick. Fortunately, the Duffer brothers did not let this hurdle be a problem and recognized Finn as the perfect choice for the character that they had envisioned. First of many, Dustin. 
Gaten Matarazzo, who was the first actor to be casted in the show, portrays the role of Dustin. He was considered perfect for the role, and the condition due to which he does not have a proper collarbone, which is addressed in the show, is a hereditary condition involving abnormal development of certain bones in the body. E.T. Go Home Many things in this show are a nod to E.T. the extraterrestrial, such as the scene with the boys riding their bikes, especially when chased by scientists. And the scientists using telecom vans to listen in to the townsfolk is also something that was inspired by the movie. Eleven's outfit that has a pink dress and blonde wig are similar to E.T.'s disguise. These homages are not just there due to the cultural relevance that E.T. had in the 80s, but rather it's also because the Duffer Brothers are huge fans of the movie and consider it an inspiration for the tone that they set for the show. Other inspirations include classics like Close Encounters of the Third Kind and other John Carpenter horror films as well. These are not the only nods that you can find, and dozens of characters and places have been named after movies from the past, mainly those who contain some horror or fantasy elements. Even those who have only seen just a few will still find much that they can recognize. Map of the Upside Down the Duffer Brothers created a 30-page document that has a large map of everything related to the Upside Down and the nature of the monster that it is too. Not everything from those documents has been shown in the show yet, and that's very evident given the fact that even Season 4 revealed several things that fans didn't know before. So even though we know quite a bit at the moment, there's still much more that meets the eye, and the Duffer Brothers will reveal more in due time. Stranger Things Comic Series Dark Horse Comics announced a partnership with Netflix for a multi-year publishing line of stories set in the Stranger Things world. The initial title was a four-issue miniseries written by Jody Hauser and interior art by Stefano Martino. The story took place during the events of the first season and took Will's perspective while he was still trapped in the Upside Down. The first issue of the miniseries was released on September 26, 2008. After this first series, many more were published all the way through 2020, some following new characters, however most of them are no longer canon. For example, a book following a test subject preceding Eleven was released, but this was deemed not canon when Season 4 released due to the reveal that One killed every test subject except Eleven and Kali. Record breaking. Within just the first month, the third season of Stranger Things was watched by 64 million households, which set a new record as the most watched Netflix series at the time. And as briefly mentioned before, season 4's part 2 caused the Netflix site to crash for some time because it received a massive surge of viewers who were ready to see how the season concludes. And they were definitely not disappointed given how amazing the season was. Accusations of Stolen Ideas On April 2018, a filmmaker called Charlie Kessler filed a lawsuit against the Duffer Brothers, who claimed that Stranger Things was a stolen idea. He stated that his short film Montauk has a similar premise of a boy that goes missing close to a military base that is doing otherworldly experiments, and that it even has a monster that comes from another dimension. He continued that he pitched this idea to the Duffer Brothers in hopes of getting a feature film made, and even gave them ideas that weren't originally present in the short film. At the end of his lawsuit, he demanded a third of the income that they made from Stranger Things, and stated that his project was going to be called The Montauk Project. The lawyer of the Duffer Brothers said that the brothers never saw the film nor spoke to him about it, and that Kessler had no input whatsoever related to the concept of Stranger Things that the Duffer Brothers already had. Eventually, the judge allowed Kessler's lawsuit to proceed into trial, but just before the trial started in May 2019, Kessler withdrew it because he was given proof that the concept of Stranger Things originally dated back to times as early as 2010. Thus, it was proven that the Duffer Brothers did not steal Kessler's idea, and this entire situation was resolved without complicated court proceedings. Running Up That Hill The song Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush was originally released in the year of 1985 
and it did not go higher than number 30 on the US Billboard chart. It wasn't a flopped song by any means, but it was not the biggest hit in her discography. Then comes Stranger Things Season 4, and the song was used as the theme for Max. After the song was played numerous times for the character, it ended up becoming incredibly popular, and it became the number one song on the US iTunes chart in the first week of the release of the episodes that use it. This resurgence of the song ended up making a total of 1.9 million euro in profit, and it's being joked about that 37 years is the longest that a song has taken to become popular. As for the singer herself, she says that the best thing about the resurgence is not the money, but rather that the fact that a whole new audience will get to experience the song. Separate Ways Staying on the topic of music, Steve Perry, who was the former lead vocalist of Journey, was super impressed by the Stranger Things season 4 remix of their hit song, Separate Ways. and said that it was exactly how he wanted to make the song originally in the 80s, but lacked the technology to do it right. He went on to even help with the development of the remix later on, and the end result turned out great. Winona Ryder's Real Life Parallel Winona Ryder in Stranger Things portrays the wonderful role of a mother whose child goes missing. She played the role very convincingly, but that is easily to be expected of an actress as good as her. However, there is a bit of a real-life parallel here in terms of her dedication to missing children. In 1994, Ryder dedicated her film Little Women to Polly Hannah Kloss, who was a young girl from her hometown in California that went missing and was later revealed to be kidnapped. She offered a reward of $200,000 for anyone who had information on the subject at the time before she was unfortunately found dead, and she remains a strong supporter of the Polyclos Foundation for Prevention of Abduction. New Coke For a limited time, the Coca-Cola brand had released a limited run of New Coke, which was to coincide with the third season of the show that takes place in the year of 1985. And of course, that's when New Coke was originally introduced. And then there were none. Although many assumed that the fourth season of Stranger Things might be the last one, this was not the case. Despite being split into two parts and having a two hour long episode, season four is not the end of the show. Instead, season five has been revealed to be the final season of the long-running show, and the Duffer brothers recently announced that they will begin writing the script next month in August. But they did talk about a few things, such as Will having a big part and focus in the final season, and that it will have a lot of the original groupings and will take place entirely within Hawkins. They also implied that it won't take as long to be made as season four of the show, which is good news for fans. Interestingly, it is reported that the cast had no idea and were shocked by this information because the only time they were revealed this information was when they saw the news being released publicly. Steve was originally a D-bag. It's a well-known fact within the community that Steve Harrington was originally written as the quote, biggest douchebag on the planet, and it was even believed that he was going to force himself upon Nancy Wheeler at one point in the story. However, when the Duffer brothers met the actor Joe Keery, they found him much more likable and charming than they had originally envisioned. Thus, instead of changing the actor, they simply changed the character. And it worked out perfectly, since seeing him develop into the good guy that is part of the gang is one of the best things in the show. Stranger Things isn't the only example of this happening, as Jesse Pinkman was originally going to be killed off in the first season of Breaking Bad, but the writers changed their mind after seeing Aaron Paul's performance up close. Silent Hill Parallels Old horror movies are not the only thing that Stranger Things is inspired by. The Silent Hill video game franchise is the biggest example that belongs to a different media. As Stranger Things contains many possible homages and parallels to the games, first of all, the entire concept of Upside Down is quite similar to the Otherworld concept of Silent Hill, in which the Otherworld mirrors the real world but is filled with haze and demonic creatures that are hard to kill. Then we have living portals between inanimate walls that specific characters can walk through. Mike's family shares the same last name as Deputy Wheeler from Silent Hill, Homecoming, 
while an Eleanor Gilly Spy is mentioned in Stranger Things, which might be a reference to the Gilly Spies from Silent Hill, which are an important family in the game's lore, which includes a telekinetic girl that spends most of her time inside of a hospital. And lastly, the actor Finn Wolfhard bears an undeniable resemblance to Alex Shepard's little brother from the game called Joshua. On an additional note, Silent Hill is not the only game that the Duffer Brothers took inspiration from. They're also big fans of the Dark Souls franchise and said they took inspiration from The Last of Us 2, especially in terms of the monster's designs. Hashtag Justice for Barb The character of the nerdy Barb in the first season of Stranger Things, who is taken away and killed by a monster, became more popular in real life than the creators had originally expected. Viral hashtags began to spread throughout the internet after the release of the episode in which she dies, such as hashtag I'm with Barb and hashtag Justice for Barb, and even fan sites and forums dedicated to the character showed up, which demanded that the character of Barb deserved better and should be brought back to the show. Although neither character nor the actress, Shannon Purser, came back for the second season, the movement inspired the Duffer Brothers when it came to writing for the next season. Most notably, Nancy mentions in a scene that no one ever cares about Barb, which is a good way to honor the fact that the character deserves a mention despite her death. Once all of this was said and done, the last thing that led to the movement was trying to get the actress of a character a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Guest Actress in the Series, which highlighted how well her character was received by the fans. This did not end just there for the show itself, as part of season 2 includes the attempt of getting justice for Barb so that her family can gain some closure. They can't say that Hawkins was performing experiments that opened a tunnel into an alternate dimension without sounding crazy, so they framed them for having a toxic chemical leak and eventually told everyone that Barb was killed due to that, and that Hawkins disposed of her body to cover their tracks. The Duffer's Regret Another case of a character becoming more popular than the creators had expected was Chrissy. Although she was not around for long, fans loved her chemistry with other characters and wished she was around for longer. Eventually, the Duffer brothers admit that they regretted killing her off so early, but don't think that her death was pointless because she was vital for Max's survival. On top of that, her death was reminiscent of Tina Gray's death from A Nightmare on Elm Street as Chrissy was killed while levitating in the air because of someone who was attacking her mind. And another quick parallel is in Eddie, who is similar to the character of Rod, who ran away from the police and hid because he knew no one would believe what he had witnessed. Dungeons and Dragons Some of the entities in Stranger Things are taken directly from Dungeons and Dragons. First off, Vecna is a real D&D monster who is a former king and lich and is often referred to as the Whispered One due to his obsession of keeping and acquiring secrets, which increases his powers. Then we have the iconic Demogorgon, which, according to Dragon Magazine, is considered the most powerful villain in the first edition of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons as it rules as a demon prince of the Abyss, which is an ever-changing plane of chaotic evil. And last but not least, there is a fact that the earlier versions of D&D features a demi-plane of shadow, which was a twisted and darker version of the material world that it surrounded, similar to the Upside Down, which was originally called the Nether. All of this came full circle in the end as in 2020, IDW Publishing and Dark Horse co-published a Stranger Things and Dungeons and Dragons miniseries. A product of its time. It's no secret that Stranger Things is all about the 80s nostalgia. Not only is it set in that period of time, it's quite accurate in most ways and contains hundreds of small and large details that are easter eggs to the popular cult elements of the time. This carries on to society related elements of that time period as well, which includes some negative aspects that would not fly today. For example, Bullying and casual homophobia are treated as a normal thing within the society, established in the show because they weren't seen as such a big deal in the 80s. And Robin is revealed to be a closeted homosexual too, who is scared of revealing her truth to the others. And then we have the fact that the characters are more accepting towards smoking, since Joyce smokes around her kids, 
Hopper smokes on the job and even within a restaurant. It wasn't until the 90s when smoking was outlawed in respected public establishments, and smoking around your children is even considered child abuse by many as of today. Furthermore, Nancy and Jonathan buy gasoline, nails, bear traps, sledgehammers, and even revolver ammunition, and get a simple weird look from the clerk. They got away with it because laws against such things were not as strong back in the day. Stores would be more reluctant to sell such potentially harmful objects to students as they might end up using it improperly or against their school. There's also the fact that children in the show are able to wander as much as they want, and even if they're gone for long periods of time, their parents get only a little worried but don't think anything bad must have happened to them. It's because it was easier to go around and stay at each other's houses back in the day, whereas people are more likely to remain in their enclosed environments today. And lastly, middle-aged mothers are ogling Billy and finding him super attractive, and then he proceeds to fat shame a kid. Hey, Lardass! No running on my watch! You wanna be bad for life, Lardass? However, the women don't seem to care about this and no one comes to the child's defense. Of course, all of these things still exist in our society, but they are far more frowned upon now and not considered as normal or acceptable as they once used to be. And you're likely to see such behavior get shunned when it's displayed publicly. Unlike the other things, of course, there's nothing wrong with kids hanging out more outside of their houses, but it's still worth mentioning as it was something people of that generation would always tell you stories about, whereas the children of today typically have many more restrictions. Genre hopping. Works of fiction usually stick to a certain genre and often combine two or three of them at best. However, Stranger Things never seems to settle on what genre it belongs to. Although sci-fi and horror elements remain consistent, it also delves into real science, supernatural powers, super science, coming of age stories, and even dark comedy at times. It's also an odd mixture between a show meant for teenagers and still contains the brutality that you might expect to see in an adults only show. Ultimately, Stranger Things has a little something for everyone, and the writers have done a great job at keeping it consistent, and it doesn't feel like a mess despite utilizing so many genres. Fan Theories When you start to look at the fan theories for Stranger Things, the one thing that you notice immediately is that many of them turn out to be true later. For example, one of the most common theories that you'd hear is that there was a test subject before everyone else who successfully mastered his skills, and in a way that later turned out to be Vecna. Other theories usually link the show to other universes, such as Stephen King's Multiverse, Eerie Indiana, Silent Hill, Twin Peaks, Gravity Falls, and Welcome to Night Vale. The Upside Down Many theorize that the Upside Down is perhaps a post-apocalyptic world in an alternate dimension, or perhaps it's the aftermath of an alien invasion. The latter is linked to how Season 2 strongly implies that the ruler of the Upside Down, the Mind Flayer, tries to take over as many dimensions as possible, so it's entirely possible that the Upside Down was once a normal world like ours but was taken over by aliens and eventually destroyed with little to no human life left inside. Eddie's Fate After the second volume of Season 4 premiered, a theory surfaced regarding the ultimate fate of Eddie Munson. Many fans believe that Eddie is not truly dead. The theory draws parallels to Eddie's D&D campaign predicting the outcome of this season. When Dustin rolls first, but only manages to roll an 11, and fails to beat Vecna in the campaign. Dustin's roll predicted the final episode, where 11 does actually lose to Vecna. Following the trend of D&D lore and foreshadowing, it's theorized that Eddie will actually return as Koss. In Dungeons & Dragons lore, Koss is a human vampire who uses a shield and a sword as his weapons, just like he did in his final moments. He's the most trusted lieutenant of Vecna, who after many years of loyal service, ends up betraying him. On top of this, a huge piece of evidence are Eddie's tattoos. Most notably, he has one of a swarm of bats, and another of an undead creature on puppet strings with a creepy hand controlling the strings. 
Eddie's popularity alone almost guarantees that we haven't seen the last of him. Crossovers stuck in limbo. Due to its immense popularity, Stranger Things had a number of crossovers with huge games such as Dead by Daylight, Fortnite, Smite, Rocket League, Magic the Gathering, and the Seven Deadly Sins Kodansha mobile game. However, ever since November in 2021, Netflix seems to have seemingly revoked the licenses to these crossovers. With the cosmetics in Fortnite and Rocket League not coming back, and content outright being removed from Dead by Daylight and 7DS. As of now, there has been no confirmation from Netflix or the Duffer Brothers as to why they revoked their agreements, but it's evident that many fans are upset. Spin-off On May 3rd of this year, the Duffer Brothers announced that they had ideas for a spin-off, but nobody knew the idea or concept of it and that it hadn't even began the writing process yet. They also stated that Netflix and everyone involved would be surprised when the concept was released to them. Finn Wolfhard, who plays Mike Wheeler, had apparently correctly guessed the concept of the spinoff. Like and subscribe to see more videos like this, and let us know what topics we should cover next. And last but not least, a huge shout out and thank you to the channel members that make this possible. Maker, out.